We're going to be talking first about an amino acid called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Now, NAC was really popular the last few years because of its tremendous immune effects. So NAC helps with the immune system. It helps um, with different types of common colds and other viruses. NAC is a primary driver for the production of something called glutathione. Now glutathione is a compound that your body produces. NAC is the rate limiting ingredient. So it's one of the main ingredients that goes into generating glutathione. When we think about what glutathione does, its primary role is to aid the liver in the detoxification of environmental pollutants and toxicants. And so when you don't have adequate glutathione, your liver basically can't do its functionality as well, cannot detoxify as well. This can increase the body's burden and it therefore can increase the risk of developing things like chronic degenerative inflammatory diseases, autoimmune conditions. So we, the body needs to be able to produce glutathione. And, and the problem with today's world is we're so overwhelmed with pollutants in the environment. So we got, we've got things in the air, you know, you've got pollutants in the water, you've got a number of chemical compounds and additives, preservatives, pesticides, and other things in the food. Well, for all of these things you're being exposed to, you need glutathione to be able to break those down and excrete them out of your body safely. And you're not gonna be able to adequately regenerate or supply the body with glutathione if you don't have enough in acetylcysteine or cysteine as an amino acid. Again, very, very critical, very, very important. Now, one of its other major roles is in its properties as what's known as a mucolytic. A mucolytic means that it breaks down mucus. So those of you that struggle with any kind of chronic obstructive pulmonary issue, you know, asthma, emphysema, um, if you've got a cold or a flu and you've got heavy, heavy mucus in your lungs or heavy, heavy sinus congestion, this makes N-acetylcysteine NAC, its, it's mucolytic p power is, is, is unmatched by anything else. And this is, very, this is a very, very powerful amino acid, meaning that you can go over and you can go over to the drugstore and you can buy a number of over-the-counter remedies, you know, for sinus congestion and, and for uh, flu retention in the lung, et cetera. But NAC works better and it's natural and there aren't really any side effects. And so <clears throat> there's no untoward other fillers or other ingredients. If you buy just a pure NAC, you're getting very, very powerful mucolytic without any uh, downstream side effects that you obviously that you wouldn't want and and again a lot of people when they have that congestion when they have that excessive mucus one of the things they gravitate toward more than anything else in doctors a lot of times will, will prescribe steroids and then of course you know steroids are anti-inflammatory they they can help with that mucus production but they deplete vitamin D and calcium they deplete magnesium and they deplete vitamin C and so if you think about you know the consequences of causing these nutritional deficiencies when we're trying to resolve an immune issue and these nutrients are necessary for healthy immune function, you can see why steroids may not be as good of a choice as in acetylcysteine, as NAC. So again, it offers a natural way to break mucus down and to improve uh, upon immune support and function, but also a natural way to help with detoxification. So in my opinion, one of the biggest powerhouse amino acids therapeutically is in acetylcysteine. Now how much should a person take if, if say we're trying to get a mucolytic effect? If you're trying to get a mucolytic effect, 1500 to 3000 milligrams a day you know, this is, and if you're really, uh, if you're really sick, a cold, flu, you know, you, you can go that that high upwards into that 3,000 range. If we're trying to just get good glutathione support, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 a day is a good place to start. So again, easy to take, widely available over the counter, um, and very, very powerful. NAC is one you're definitely going to want to put in your home remedy arsenal. Now next, let's talk about L-tryptophan. Uh, L-tryptophan 
is an amino acid as well, and its primary role, it's got, a, it's got a few, but one of its major roles is it helps your body to produce serotonin. Might help if I spell that right for you. There we go. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that's predominant role, you know, some people call it a happy neurotransmitter. You know, so it plays a role in, in, um, in your demeanor. It's important though as well, we, from serotonin, we get something called melatonin. And of course, melatonin plays that primary role in helping us fall asleep at night. You know, what happens when we, um, when we have adequate melatonin and we go to bed at night, that melatonin shuts off the section of our brain that produces cortisol so that we can stay asleep and repair and recover. And we can convert serotonin into melatonin. So remember, tryptophan is the precursor to the body's ability to be able to do this. And so there are a number of studies that show um, that, you know, that tryptophan taken, you know, between 500 and 1,000 milligrams per day can be an effective uh, support for mood. Um, there's some studies that show that there's a, a benefit for depression, those that suffer with depression. And if you think about, you know, most antidepressants that doctors prescribe today, what are they? They are SSRIs. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, drugs like Paxil and Prozac, and these drugs are antidepressants, right, used in order to preserve serotonin. So, so when we say selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, these drugs stop the body from breaking down serotonin and recycling it. And so it keeps serotonin in the nerve cleft longer for the, so that the individual can get a kind of a longer lasting impact or benefit of the, ser the action of serotonin. And, you know, so if you're, if you're looking at tryptophan as an option, it's also important to understand if you just start taking tryptophan and you're on one of these particular types of medications, um, tryptophan can enhance the functionality of an SSRI. And there's actually something called serotonin syndrome, which can make you sick. Um, so, you know, it might, be, it might be smart if you're on an SSRI and you're tr wanting, wanting to try to add some tryptophan, again, tryptophan being a natural amino acid that you, get, you can get from eating, you know, protein predominantly, but, you know, you, you've all probably the Thanksgiving thing where people eat turkey at Thanksgiving and then they get tired and want to take a nap, and this is one of the reasons why is that there's a lot of L-tryptophan in turkey. Other meats contain tryptophan as well, but, but turkey predominantly one of the, one of the biggest concentration doses naturally. But again, if you're taking tryptophan to try to support your brain, uh, your anxiety or your depression, and you're on an SSRI as well, you gotta be careful because the SSRI might start working too strongly, and then you can end up with serotonin syndrome. So my advice there is talk with your doctor. Um, you know, if you've got a good doctor, they can measure your serotonin levels. So they can measure through lab, they can monitor your serotonin levels and make sure they're not going up too high and creating that. I've seen this a lot in my practice where people come in and they're, 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 um, they're kind of playing with different amino acids. They've heard some of this information before uh, and they're also taking SSRIs and we get their serotonin labs back and they're, they're off the chart and they're feeling terrible. It's because they've developed this issue. So you just want to be cautious that if you're going to start supplementing here, with 5-HTP uh, with or with L-tryptophan, which is 5-HTP uh, is 5-hydroxytryptophan, the, these two uh, together a lot of people will use to help with serotonin. If you're on an SSRI, just be careful. Now, um, there's some research I wanted to, to pull up here on this particular topic. You see the effects of dietary tryptophan on affective disorders. And so in this randomized crossover study, what they found is that those consuming more dietary tryptophan um, resulted in less depressive symptoms as well as a decreased anxiety. So this study, small scale study done on 25 young adults found that people that ate more tryptophan in their diet and had basically that had an excess of, of like point, I think it was 0.9 grams per day of tryptophan through their food choices 
were less depressed and had less anxiety. So that's you know one very important aspect just from food. Food is very powerful and sometimes people jump to supplements and forget the power of food. Don't forget the power of food and this is why I mentioned earlier in the show you know, all these people going plant-based, having a really hard time getting some of these amino acids in high enough quantities in their day-to-day -day diet, and they're suffering the repercussions of these deficiencies. And so, again, here's another research study on the association between dietary tryptophan intake and migraine. You see here in this study, our results showed that subjects who had a median intake of 0.84 to 1.6 grams of tryptophan per day had reduced odds of developing migraine by approximately 54 to 60% relative to those who consumed under a half a gram of tryptophan a day. So again, we're just talking about dietary consumption. We're not even talking here about the potential for supplementation. Now, again, with, with all these amino acids that we're gonna talk about today, you can measure them all. I mean, you know, aside from just measuring serotonin, you can measure serotonin, but you can also measure, uh, directly, you can measure tryptophan. So. Um, you know, this may be one of those things, if you're, if you're considering, you know, using some of these therapeutic amino acids, you might just consider having your amino acid levels checked. And again, get with your doctor. If your doctor can order them for you, great. If your doctor won't order them for you, you might consider using some of our online testing services where we do a lot of this deeper dive on vitamins, minerals, and amino acids.